Last one, last pre pre-match press conference. Looking ahead to Lincoln, your final game. Just thoughts going into that one. How much you're going to miss all you lot? Um, yeah, well, obviously, you know, we've put ourselves into a position by winning the other night that um, we have an opportunity of moving further up the league. So we we want to do that, really. You know, like I said, we've we've been in that top ten for so long this season. You know, we know that results need to go right around us. Um, but, but you know, we've got to do our own job first and foremost. And um, Lincoln, yeah, good club, good team, good manager, good young manager. I like Mark. Um, I think a few of their players as well. I think they've got some good players there. I think he's done a really, really good job. And um, looking forward to seeing him. We actually had a, you know, we have a good relationship with Lincoln. You know, Jez George, who, who works there, is their director of football, is another good guy. So, yeah, you know, we're looking forward to seeing the Lincoln guys at the weekend. Any updates on any on any of the injuries at the moment? Um, who is there for me to give you an update on, really? I don't know who we're how's, thinking how's about. Matt Pennington, he's not featured in no, the last couple. I don't expect he'll play anymore. No. And then, like I said, we'll look ahead to the to the rest of the season and what what you've what's gone on. Just just to sum up, you know, your thoughts on the season. Like you say, top ten finish is within reach. Yeah. It would be a, a great achievement for the club. Oh, huge, absolutely huge! It would be. Um, be great if we can do that. You know, as I said, it, the supporters do the other week. If we, twelve months ago, I said if we finished in the top twelve, everybody went, oh, you know, that would be good. Um, we're there at this moment in time. I know there's other results are gone this weekend, but other teams have got difficult fixtures. So, you know, anywhere we finish from now on up will be be an incredible season. Really, we we understand what's gone on for the last I don't know six weeks or so, but we played all the top teams with our worst squad available. So really, you know that that. It's been well documented, not only by myself, by yourselves, about what we've had to deal with. Everybody knows that, even the opposition managers, when we speak to them after the game. You know, they're saying, my God, you know, you've, you've had it all on in the last few weeks. And we have. We absolutely have. It won't be, it won't be a lot different at the weekend. The, the only thing that the players know is they've got one big, huge 90 minutes and whatever else is added on to go. And, um, you know, they've acquitted themselves really, really well this season and uh, I thought that um, I thought the reception that they got the other night and the people that stayed off the supporters was, was terrific. Um, I only had one guy um, try to question me on what happened but he soon got shouted down by a few people around him because if he doesn't know, I don't know who does know. So, you know, that was, that was great the other night but... Um, yeah, I think I think the football club's done well. You know, we haven't flirted with relegation once, as I've already said, and and it has done for years. You know, to hang on in this league, and also as well, this probably um, the the budgets in this league, the average budget in this league has gone up over eighty. I think it was eighty five, eighty six percent. You know, in the last seven or eight years, and ours hasn't. And ours hasn't got anywhere near that. So for us to keep punching above above our weight is um, is a credit to the lads really and what they've given. The only the only sadness or the tinge of sadness for me is how would we have done had we had Tom Bayliss for the last two months? How would we have done if we'd have had Danny Doe for the last ten months? How would we have done if we'd have had George Nurse? for the last 10 months. That's what I'd really like to know. Um, so, yeah, there's not a lot more we can do about that, but I'm, I am pretty sure that had we had those players with the group that we've had this season, I think, I think we'd be higher than where we are now with the potential of finishing higher than 10th if... I don't know, the sun shines down us on, on Sunday.
And while it's still a great achievement, wherever you finish from here, you know. Yeah. Is it? Do you still have that question of kind of what if, what could have happened with, like say, Danu Do, George, if they'd been fit all season, how close you were to the playoffs as well, if you'd have had those? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not being rude, but I think I just an- answered that question before, <laughs> before you asked the question. Um, so, uh, if you want to cut it, chop it, rewind it, and go back, <laughs> it probably will sound better that way. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there's. As much more that I can add to that, you know, those those injuries have been really, really crippling for us, really crippling. And um, when you think about it, really, probably what we have done, I think we've used something like, I, I don't know, I think we've probably the most of this season worked off of 15 players at best. That's probably what we've worked off this season. 15 players. There might be a few more people that have had appearances, but how many? You know, so we've probably worked off for 15 players this season. And thank, and thank God there's only one more that we have to navigate around. And you not only had the injuries as well, obviously you've had the, some refereeing decisions <laughs> where, where, you, where you've had cards overturned that have, yeah. you know, in the long term will have had an impact on, on the league position. Well, the nine points over Christmas would have been quite important, wouldn't it? Imagine us now with nine points. So, in the beginning of the season, there was another one, Accrington. I can you send Tom Flanagan off for mistaken identity for a goalkeeper? I mean, you know, one of them's an outfield player and the other one has got the brightest yellow kit on the whole world has ever seen. Mistaken identity. Hmm. I'd forgotten that one a long time ago. And you speak about competing in this league when you look at the teams that have, are in now in this league, your Sheffield Wednesdays, yeah. you know, Ipswich, your Barnsley, Bolton, it's a great achievement to be competing with those teams on a regular basis. You've only named three. There's probably another dozen, isn't there? There's probably another dozen of them there. There, there won't be a team... There won't be a team... <laughs> in this division that's got a lower budget than us that will finish above us. That, I think, and I'm just working through them last little bits of permutations, that will be a fact. That will be a fact. And progress is something that you've, you've touched on, obviously. Looking at last season to this season, to see you know what you've been able to do with what you've had to deal with, you know, lead to hopes going forward to well, there's, if that's not the case well there's I mean as I said the, the, the first bit the first season was staying up and um, you know that that was that was really tough especially going down with Covid and you know working from the hospital you know I can't you know it seems a long time ago now but I couldn't tell you how hard that was so the good thing about the progression that the club have had since is is that all of that wasn't a waste of time in that hospital bed, um, you know, and and the second year was always going to be. At the end of that year, there was always going to be a transitional year, because, you know, as whatever happens in football, and I'll never forget those boys either for what they did for me when I was in hospital. I'll never forget them for that. Um, and the second season, then what you get is you get, you know, I don't know, another 10 out and maybe another seven in. And then you get last season, you'll get another 10 out. So by the time we are where we are, the only people that are left at the football club from the time they came in two and a half years ago will be Harry Burgoyne, um, Danu Udo, who we've only had for one season. Um, and Ricky O'Pike, who um, couldn't nail down a start and was injured on the first season I came in nearly all the time. Um, second season, started off the season and he was okay. He was getting better. And then, as I said before, there was a you know it was a thought and a theory about him going out on loan and doing all of that. He went to Scunthorpe. That didn't go very well. He came back the start of this season had the off-season programme that we give the players, come back this season. And this season, 
you know, in the three I've been here, this has probably been his best season up until late when he's had that Achilles problem that we all know Achilles is there are anyone who's had an Achilles tendon problem, they're they're a problem. Um, and those who haven't, if they've had tennis elbow, it's similar to that, how painful that is. So um I think it's been two and a half years of really, really um, hard work, hard work. And um, yeah, there's been lots of people, you know, that help on a day-to-day -day business, all of my staff, even the players, you know, the players have trained this morning there. And I just said to them after the way they trained, if this was the first day of the season where they're all lively and bubbly and got a spring in their step and all of that. If they train like that on the first day of the season, I'd be absolutely delighted. And for it to be 10 months on and for them to train how they train this morning, let's, let's hope they can take that into the game at the weekend. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the summer work, um, that, that, that gets done with myself and Keith really. And, and nobody else gets too involved with that. And a word for the for the fans as well. Of obviously, you know, you've got cost of living crisis on, but they've kept backing you every week, and they're you know, six hundred already going to Lincoln. We would have had we'd have had bigger crowds here than we would have budgeted for. That's for sure. You've only had to see that. You know, if you go onto what I don't know what the crowds were here last year on average, five summit. We've had sixes here most weeks, and some of the when we've had the big guns. You know, we've had sevens and eights. So, yeah, we we our crowds this year have definitely been bigger than than what um, than what we would have done. And also, as well, I mean, I don't I don't know I don't know the mayor, but I, I'd like to thank her for the for the nice plaque that she sent me and letter that she sent me about producing a team at Shrewsbury that excites the supporters and and thank me very much for that. Um, I'd like to thank her for that award as well. It was very kind of her. And obviously, I know you've got one game left, but when do plans start for, for next next season now? Um, probably Monday. Probably Monday, really. Uh, so, yeah, probably Monday. At the moment, just got to focus on the game. Focus on the game. There's no point in looking at anything else. Just the game. We need to focus on the game. And a word for Luke Lee as well, a thousand caps then, that was nearly really good. hundred appearances for him as well and, you know, just ta ta capping off a great season as his first season as captain. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I, I remember the first time I met Luke, uh, I said it in my programme notes, I met him down in Bristol and we met, we met in Acosta and um, I did say in my programme notes as well, guess who paid? And um, for those who don't know, it definitely wasn't him that paid, it was me. So um, uh, yeah, I mean it was um, it was well worth worth the cost of coffee, wasn't it? I know you just said you don't want to focus on too much on next season, but with the what's happened in the last week, do you think that will change recruitment and recruitment strategies that the club will have going forward? In terms of obviously with it being a new board, rather than well, I don't know the, anything about that new board. I haven't spoken to anyone on it, and I don't, you know, that's that's not my business. You know, um, so if you're asking me what happened before, did Brian Caldwell pick any of the players? No, he never. He said he left that to me. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you. Okay.